After the uh, embarrassing performance of uh, Parliament over the week, I think it's very important for us to highlight suppressed issues uh, that affect the Rakyat of Malaysia before the coming elections. And uh, no better issue than the Linus Advanced Material Plant. <laughs> Is radioactive waste dumping fallout the big question? Uh, we've wasted enough time and we've got six speakers with decades of experience to share. So I'm going to get the ball rolling, but before I call on the moderator, I would like to invite the President of the Bar Council for his introductory address, Mr. Lim Chiwi. Thank you, Kishol. Good evening, aggrieved and concerned Malaysians, distinguished speakers. Foreign direct investment in itself is, of course, good for the country. However, what will this 700 million ringgit Linus plant sitting in our backyard cost us Malaysians in terms of, in terms of health, environment, monetary arising from remedying its adverse effects and emotion. The alarm bells have been ringing, alerting the authorities about the potential irreversible and permanent harm which this Linus plant could bring to Malaysia. None rang louder than the damning article in the New York Times published on 29 June 2011 that there are serious construction and engineering flaws in the storage facilities for the radioactive waste products <coughs> resulting from the processing of the rare earth at LAMP. According to the report, the engineers felt a professional duty to voice their safety concerns. The problems they detailed include structural cracks, air pockets and leaks in many of the concrete shells for 70 containment tanks, some of which are larger than double-decker buses. Furthermore, these issues have the potential to cause the plant's critical failure in operation. More critically, the toxic, corrosive and radioactive nature of the materials being leached in these tanks, should they leak, will most definitely create a contamination issue. These shortcomings constitute a recipe for disaster. The questions which I hope this forum seeks to answer are, is the raw material harmful? Is the processing of the raw material harmful? Is the storage of the waste permanent or temporary? And whichever it is, is it harmful? What is the extent and permanency of the harm? Whilst we are discussing in great detail all these questions, we must never lose sight of the foundation of our discussion. Our federal constitution guarantees our rights. Article 5, bracket 1 of the federal constitution provides, No person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty, save in accordance with law. The Court of Appeal in the judgment of Gopal Sriram, as it was then, in Tan Tek Singh against Oranjaya Prahimatan Pradidikan said as follows, and I quote, the courts should keep in tandem with the national ethos when interpreting provisions of a living document like the federal constitution, lest they be left behind while the winds of modern and progressive change pass them by. Judges must not be blind to the realities of life, neither should they wear blinkers when approaching a question of constitutional interpretation. They should, when discharging their duties as interpreters of the supreme law, adopt a liberal approach in order to implement the true intention of the framers of the federal constitution. Such an objective may only be achieved if the expression life in Article 5, Record 1 is given a broad and liberal meaning. I have reached the conclusion that the expression life appearing in Article 5, Record 1 does not refer, refer to mere existence. It incorporates all those facets that are an integral part of life itself and those matters which go to form the quality of life. Of these are the right to seek and be engaged in lawful and gainful employment and to receive those benefits that our society has to offer to its members. It includes the right to live in a reasonably healthy and pollution-free environment. This decision, particularly, particularly on the expression life under Article 5, Record 1, was also referred to by the federal court in Batu Bagi and six others against Kraja Negri Sarawak. It is absolutely crucial that in a forum such as this, and more, the public is educated as to the dangers of such a project and that whilst we may be sitting here some 260 kilometers away from this project, any harm which it causes may, if not will, find its way here. Beyond this, we must speak up and lend a helping hand to anyone, anyone facing distress, hardship and suffering. Thank you. I would like to invite our moderator, the co-chairperson of the Environment and Climate Change Committee of the Bar Council, Mr. Roger Chan.
Thank you, Kushio. And welcome everyone to tonight's uh, forum. And uh, I think tonight will be a two-way dynamics. So uh, I'm going to briefly introduce the speakers. I'm going to truncate the CVs uh, severely. I think uh, most of us who are in the tech of this issue will realize that the speakers that we have tonight are speakers in their own right. So I did not uh, spend a lengthy introduction. Okay, the first speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Gudia, those of us who are uh, long enough in the profession uh, would be no stranger to him. He was a leading practitioner in two leading cases, Bakun Dam and uh, AIE cases. And uh, Kai Ping, who is now in the take of action in Linus, he hails from Kuantan, he practice in Kuantan, and he's the person we should approach from a legal standpoint as far as LAMP is concerned. Okay, Professor Dr. Tan Kak Heng is a specialist in chemical and environmental engineering, and uh, but he was also involved, heavily involved in the AIE issues uh, in the 80s, and I believe he uh, paid uh, heavily, heavily for speaking out because uh, he was taken in during Operasi Lalang, uh, one of the ISA detainees for speaking out uh, on environmental issues. Okay, and Dr. T. Uh, Jaya Balan, uh, specialist in uh, occupational health, and also grassroots representatives whom we see and hear daily, uh, Lee Tan uh, from Safe Malaysia, and also there's Ananda Ra uh, Surabu from uh, Stop Liners. Now, these are the people at the grassroots, and we are going to hear them from different levels of spaces and, and see how we're going to address a very important issue tonight. Okay, with that, uh, I will call upon the first speaker, Professor Dr. Gudia. 